Another Tesla patent application was recently published that describes a way to process the binder and active materials used in Tesla's dry electrode manufacturing process in order to help eliminate damage to the active electrode materials during a typical dry manufacturing process. Interestingly, like the last Tesla patent that I discussed in a previous video, it has the same name as a Maxwell Technologies patent application that was previously published with the same wording in the description section. However, some changes were made to the claims section. So once again, I believe that the technology described in this application is worth examining because Tesla went to the trouble of applying for this. So let's dive into the details. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. As you're probably well aware of, Tesla uh, acquired Maxwell Technologies back in 2019, and I assume that they um, took over all their dry battery electrode patents. And Maxwell's dry battery electrode manufacturing process has apparently had to be adapted and tweaked to work for Tesla's needs. However, as far as I can tell, the core of the technology does work. And um, once again, this seems to be confirmed with Tesla applying for this new patent um, with this application here, which is nearly identical to the previous Maxwell Technologies patent application with some changes to the claims section. In my last video, when I was discussing a similar situation with another Tesla patent application, um, the user none so unique on YouTube in the comments section of that video brought up the possibility of that patent application being a continuation in part. So I'm assuming that's what's going on here. Same technology with a slight change to what's being claimed in the patent application. Now I mainly want to focus in on the technology itself, but I did want to point out that when it comes to the claims section, um, there are a few claims that were omitted or slightly reworded. And number seven seems to be significant as it adds the binder material PVDF to the list in addition to PTFE. Also, it mentions the additive CMC. Now, when it comes to these two compounds, uh, PVDF and CMC, PVDF stands for polyvinylidene fluoride, which is a common binder. So that binder is now a possibility in addition to the PTFE binder, which has previously uh, been used. So I'm not sure if Tesla is actually using this or not, um, but it was added to this Tesla patent application. So that might be significant. In addition, the compound CMC stands for carboxymethylcellulose which I looked up and CMC is a thickening agent used in the manufacturing of anodes. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive into some key important improvements that are mentioned here in this patent application to the dry battery electrode manufacturing process. In reference to an energy storage device, which can be a battery cell or a capacitor, for example, this patent app points out that deleterious, which basically means harmful, processes can occur on the surface of the active materials in an electrode that can lead to battery failure. As a reminder, when we talk about the active compounds in the anode of the battery, that generally refers to most commonly um, a graphite or other uh, carbon-based material. And when we talk about the active materials in a cathode, those are usually metal oxides. Um, and a battery is generally referred to by the cathode materials. For instance, a nickel manganese cobalt battery, those are the main metal oxides that are used in the cathode of that battery. Beyond just complete battery cell failure, even in a working battery cell, these harmful processes can have several other negative results, including reduced storage capacity. Now, if these harmful processes are happening, um, it's important, of course, that you find out what's causing those problems in order to get to the root of the problem. So when it comes to the root cause and what's causing these problems in the typical manufacturing process of a dry electrode, from what I gather from reading through this application, typically the binder material, um, which in Tesla's case is most commonly PTFE. Um, so the binder and the active material are mixed and then subjected to high pressure, high shear processes 
which may damage the active materials and lead to those harmful processes that were mentioned previously. Further down in the description section, uh, more details and specifics were given about the damage that is caused in a traditional process, which is described as, quote, particles of active materials may break, fuse, strip, or be chemically altered during such processing. Now, in order to get a good idea of what high shear meant in terms of mixing these components together, I found this particular article on highlandequip.com. The author of this article wrote, quote, Shear forces are caused by one force pushing part of a mixture while another force pushes a different part of the mixture in the opposite direction in a parallel field. The higher the shear force is, the better the materials can incorporate together, even mixtures with viscous liquids and solids. High shear mixers have a high speed rotor that forces the mixture outward against a stator to generate shear. When it comes to an example of a high shear mixing process that is actually mentioned in this application, jet milling, for example, is mentioned in this application as an example of a high shear mixing process. And from what is described here, um, high shear processes are necessary, quote, to disperse the PTFE particles in a manner suitable for forming a self-supporting processable dry electrode film. So here arises the problem. If jet milling or another high shear process is necessary in order to properly um, mix these particles together to really form a um, processable dry electrode film, as is mentioned here. If you have to go through that process, but that process damages the active materials, what's the solution? Thankfully, the solution described here is a simple sounding one um, where the binder and the active materials are first processed separately, then combined together after those separate processes. The binder material still goes through a low shear and high shear process, um, which sounds a lot like what one of my sources mentioned to me in a topic I covered in a past video in regards to um, a process Tesla was using to limit the clumping problem where the electrode powders were described as going through a two-step process. Nonetheless, the active material apparently does not go through a high shear process with what's described in this application. And when the binder and active materials are combined, the mixing process is described as non-destructive. So this is what Tesla is calling a parallel process. You process the binder materials through very high shear processes. Then you take your active materials and you mix those together, the active anode or cathode materials, for instance, and you mix those together in a non-destructive, non-high shear process. So apparently by doing those two things separately and then bringing them together, that helps eliminate the damage that was normally happening to the active materials in a typical process. Now, beyond just helping to eliminate uh, the damage to the active electrode particles in this process, um, apparently there are some bonus benefits to this as well. As this patent application describes, quote, unexpectedly it was discovered that the parallel processing methods provided herein may more efficiently utilize the binder available. Thus, some electrode films fabricated as described herein were stronger than those fabricated using typical dry electrode methods. And apparently being able to more utilize the binder that is available, um, this helps uh, with performance gains. And I believe it's very possible that this is referring to um, what I actually talked about in the last video, um, that last patent application where Tesla described a super fibrilized binder. I believe that's what's being referred to here is the super fibrilized binder, that two-step process is what is described here. They do that separately, then they combine the active materials together. So I believe really um, these two patent applications and these two um, technologies go together hand in hand. And I believe that uh, once again, that's what's being described here, that super fibrilized binder that I discussed in a past video. So really to wrap all this up, once again, this patent application really indicates to me that the Maxwell Technologies core dry electrode manufacturing processes do work. Yes, Tesla is having to adapt it a little bit, but the core technology does work. And technologies that are described here, for instance, that help eliminate the damage to the active materials and what I believe the connected patent, that super fibrilized binder that I previously discussed, 
When you add those two things together, those are technologies that really makes Tesla's dry electrode manufacturing process potentially superior to other processes that are either being developed or being used right now in the market. So I believe this is a key important technology to describe, but I would love to hear what you think about all this in the comments section below. Um, do let me know what you think about all this. And if you have anything to add, um, do share that below in the comments section. Um, I also want to say a special thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.